the 35 Whalen is one of the most popular wildcats ever made. It earned the nickname the poor man's magnum because any standard action rifle could cheaply be made into a 358 caliber thumper. But this cartridge turned out to be more than that. Some claim that it's the most versatile American cartridge ever made, while others claim that it's an outdated cartridge that should have faded out in the 1950s. The developers of the 35 Whalen envisioned it being used on everything from deer to dangerous game, but with much less recoil and in a smaller rifle than the 375. Was that goal achieved, or is the Whalen just not really ideal for anything? In this video, we'll take a deep dive into the legendary 35 Whalen and explore the history and relevance of the poor man's magnum. The 35 Whalen arose in 1922 as an attempt to fill the need for 375 H&H performance in a standard action American rifle with readily available components. The need arose from the fact that 375 H&H rifles and reloading components were really expensive and hard to get. The fact that almost any 30 out 6 rifle could quickly become a 358 caliber thumper made the 35 Whalen an instant hit. Credit for the 35 Whalen is usually given to either Colonel Townsend Whalen or James Howe, or a combination of both. Colonel Whalen is probably one of the most respected rifle cartridge experts in history, and James Howe is considered to be one of the greatest gunsmiths in history. You know a cartridge is special when either of these two historical figures are associated with it. There's two origin stories for the invention of the 35 Whalen, and surprisingly, both of these origin stories come from the same person. In 1923, Colonel Whalen claimed that he designed the cartridge and James Howe machined all the tooling and dies and made the rifles. But Colonel Whalen contradicted that statement in 1940 when he claimed that James Howe developed the cartridge by himself and asked Whalen if he could name the cartridge after him. In retrospect, the latter story is probably the correct one. The 35 Whalen was simply a 30 6 case necked up to fit a 358 caliber bullet. After numerous attempts to make a new cartridge, this combination was settled on because 30 6 brass was extremely common and good 35 caliber bullets were readily available at the time. The 35 Wayland Wildcat was a very popular cartridge throughout the 20s, 30s, and 40s. But as more rifles were chambered in 375 H&H and the Magnum cartridges hit the scene, its popularity started to wane. Then in the 1980s, hunters were rejecting many of the Magnum cartridges and wanted decent performance without the Magnum recoil. This was a time when old Wildcats like the 7mm 08 and 35 Whalen made a huge comeback with the help of Remington. The 35 Whalen was officially standardized and had Remington factory support by 1987. Even today, those original Remington 700s chambered in 35 Whalen comprise most of the 35 Whalen rifles in existence today. Ruger was also quick to embrace the 35 Whalen and its M77 platform, and those rifles are absolutely cherished by their owners. Then as we approached the early 2000s, the market trended back towards fast, heavy recoiling magnums, and the 35 Whalen was pretty much back to being a cartridge for custom rifles, reloaders, and old guys who didn't follow trends. Then about a decade ago, the old Whalen suddenly came back to life for reasons that most people aren't aware of. The Southern United States was just absolutely overloaded with deer and chronic wasting disease was a huge concern. So several Southern states decided that more deer needed to be harvested. States like Mississippi decided to have a primitive firearm season where single shot, uh, breech loading, exposed hammer cartridge rifles of 35 caliber or larger could be used to take deer during an optimal time. You know, within a couple of years, the market was just flooded with these single shot, exposed hammer, 
you know, breech-loaded guns chambered in 35 Wayland. And this is my legal primitive firearm chambered in 35 Wayland that I personally used on those hunts. You know, it's a cheap CVA rifle built by Bergera. You know, but, uh, you know, last year I took the loophole scope off of it and threw on this cheap fixed power weaver. And now it's a truck gun. You know, this gun loves the 200 grain Barnes TTSXs. I mean, it's, it's actually very accurate. You know, also just last year, the state of Iowa approved the 35 Wayland for deer hunting in that state. So the cartridge is really gaining in popularity. Because of the sudden demand for 35 Wayland, manufacturers started filling up the shelves with 35 Wayland ammo again. And this new generation of hunters using the 35 Wayland on their Iowa or primitive deer hunts discovered just how awesome this cartridge is. And now custom gun makers are flooded with orders for 35 Wayland rebarrels. So as it stands right now, the 35 Wayland has a strong following in America and it seems to be getting stronger. The 35 Wayland can be accurately categorized as a medium bore cartridge, basically in the same category as cartridges like the 338 Win Mag, the 350 Remington, the 9.3 by 62, and the uh, 375 H and H. Originally, the 35 Wayland was designed for round nose 35 caliber bullets that were common back in the day. Because of this, they went with a one in 16 twist barrel, but as Spitzer bullets in 35 caliber became available, rifle builders moved to a 1 in 14 twist rate. When Remington started making commercial rifles in the 1980s, they used a 1 in 16 twist barrel in their Waylands because the 350 Rem Mag used the same bullets at the same velocity with that twist rate. So that's what Remington used. Most people had no issues with the 1 in 16 twist rate, and it shot standard 200, 225, and 250 grade loads fine. But today, people opt for a 1 in 14 or 1 in 12 twist barrel. I personally make my 35 Wayland builds with a 1 in 14 twist barrel. I do that so I can easily stabilize 180 grain to 270 grain bullets with that 1 in 14 twist. That 1 in 14 twist is right in the sweet spot for the 225 grain bullets that I shoot the majority of the time. So that's what I go with. And now let's talk about what the naysayers of the 35 Whalen often declare. That the small shoulder on the 35 Whalen has headspace issues. Isn't it funny that the only people who claim this are people with absolutely no experience with the 35 Wayland. I assure you that no properly cut chamber with 35 Wayland will have headspace issues. I've never seen or experienced headspace issues on any 35 Wayland that I've ever owned. Although I have seen some poorly done, actually improved jobs that did have issues, but any rifle with a poorly done chamber is going to have headspace issues. So think about it. The 35 Wayland has been used for a hundred years and nobody using it is complaining about headspacing. You know, they're too busy filling the freezer. So if you own a well-built rifle, disregard the headspace rumor. Ironically, the last guy who tried to tell me that the 35 Wayland didn't have enough shoulder to headspace off of actually shot a 416 Ruger which looks appears to have less shoulder to headspace off of. <laughs> kind of funny, huh? You know, you also hear people say that, oh, it's got too shallow of a shoulder to uh, headspace off of, but maybe they shoot the 9.3 by 62, which also has a shallow shoulder. So bottom line, the shoulder is not a problem in a properly chambered rifle. To get a high quality 
bolt action 35 Whalen rifle, the used market can be pretty damn expensive. So most people get an old 30 out six rifle and rebarrel it for 35 Whalen. You know, even though most 35 Whalen rifles are custom jobs like this one, that doesn't mean that they're expensive to build. This is a 35 Whalen rifle that I had built last year. And uh, I wanted to show my viewers how easy it is to get a 35 Whalen on the cheap. And I actually made a video of this uh, earlier this year and posted it on my YouTube channel. So if you want to see the build video for this rifle, go ahead and subscribe to my channel um, and browse through the videos and look for that. But it's a great video. Um, basically, this rifle right here has a receiver from an old Sears Model 53 and 30-06 that I bought at a gun show for $150. It's basically a Winchester Model 70 push feed action, you know, rebranded for Sears. I then sent it out to Packnor to get rebarreled for 35 Whalen, you know. Subscribe to my channel and watch that video and see how easy it is to do this. To sum it up, this rifle shoots sub MOA and costs the same price as a new Browning X Bolt. You know, you could get really cheap here and have an old 30-06 reboard to 35 Whalen. just make sure that the barrel profile is thick enough for handling 358 caliber bullets. You know, uh, many uh, lightweight 30-06s, um, their barrels aren't thick enough in my opinion, and I prefer just to re-barrel an old receiver with a, a number four contour barrel. You know, in the end, the price difference isn't that much, and you'll be happy that you did it that way. So I highly recommend a complete rebarrel. The 35 Whalen is not a long range target cartridge. It was developed exclusively to be a versatile hunting cartridge, and at that, it excels. It fires a 225 grain bullet at the same velocity that a 30 out six fires a 180 grain bullet with the exact same powder charge too. I know it seems like witchcraft, but it's the truth. Many firearm experts claim that the 35 Whalen is the pinnacle of efficiency that can be achieved in a bottleneck rifle cartridge. And I agree with that assessment. There's nothing out there that has the performance to powder ratio like the 35 Whalen does, it really is the epitome of efficiency. To many hunters, getting a heavy, large diameter bullet on an animal at 2,800 feet per second with moderate recoil is a dream come true. And this is the real reason why people love to hunt with the 35 Whalen. In my own personal experiences, it puts animals down way faster than a 300 Magnum or a 7 millimeter Magnum you know, with, with about the same recoil or less. Also, the 35 Whalen kills just like a 338 Wind Mag, in my opinion, but with more efficiency and a lot less recoil. I've taken everything from small deer to bison with this cartridge, and it's never failed to perform for me. The extra thump you get over the 30 calibers is instantly noticeable inside of 300 yards. Here's a comparison of all the popular medium bore cartridges used here in the United States. And these are all my personal loads shooting 250 grain bullets within my high accuracy nodes for that cartridge. I did this to do an apples to apples comparison between the cartridges. You know, even though I know you'll probably use a 300 grain bullet for the 375 H and H, uh, 286 grain bullets for the 9.3, and probably a 225 grain bullet for the 35 Whalen. For all intents and purposes, the 9.3 and the Whalen are ballistic twins. If we use the same exact bullet weights at the same exact velocity, there'll probably be almost no difference in uh, 
ballistics at all these ranges and probably very little difference in recoil energy as well. If you're going to shoot a Cape Buffalo, the 375 is going to be the best option for that. But let's not talk about the continent of Africa for a moment. North American critters really don't need this much energy. In North America, you know, pretty much all of these would be adequate loads for animals such as bears, moose, bison, and nilgai. When you hunt these large animals, you'll be shooting well under 300 yards. So let's look at uh, about 250 yards on this chart, which is as far as you'll ever need to shoot a bear, moose, or bison, in my opinion. So looking at 250 yards, drift and drop are pretty much the same for all of these. You know, even the lowly 35 Wayland. And all of these are impacting with enough energy to level a 2,000-pound bison or a 1,000-pound brown bear with ease. And that's an indisputable fact. But look at these recoil numbers. The Wayland does the exact same thing as the 338 wind mag at that distance. But the wind mag has a 27% increase in recoil over the Wayland. I mean, even you go out to 300 yards here and the distant, I mean, the, the difference in drift and drop is only about a half inch. I mean, uh, you know, people who say, oh, the 35 Wayland has horrible ballistics, horrible BC's rainbow trajectory. I mean, look at that, man. Now let's look at a chart with the more commonly used 225 grain projectiles. The 225 grain bullet is pretty much the sweet spot for the 35 Wayland, in my opinion. You know, still, the Wayland and the Wind Mag have almost the same trajectory inside a 300 yards, you know, still about, uh, you know, a little over a half inch difference in drift and drop on that. But the 338 does have the energy advantage, a slight energy advantage, because it's uh, go traveling at a higher velocity. But the Wayland has much more frontal diameter and much less recoil. And what this chart doesn't show is efficiency. The Wayland does all this with 57 grains of powder. And the 338 Wind Mag takes 75 grains of powder to do this. You know, that's a that's a full 18 grains less powder in the 35 Wayland. In my opinion, that's an enormous benefit to the Wayland. No matter how much you respect the 338 Wind Mag which I do respect, you can't argue with the Wayland's efficiency. So I hope this segment of the video gave you a better understanding of how the 35 Wayland compares to other medium bore cartridges. The 35 Wayland is very easy to load for, and like the 30-06, it likes many different medium burn rate powders. You can't go wrong with 4064, Varget, Reloader 15, and powders like that with the 35 Wayland. But for some reason, 
I seem to get the best combination of accuracy and velocity with IMR4064 and Varget when I'm using my 200 to 225 grain loads. Some people use Magnum primers with a 35 Whalen, which might be a good option with ball powders, but for any extruded power powder, I you know I recommend a standard large rifle primer. Remember, you're dealing with a smaller charge of medium burn rate powder and a cartridge that's the opposite of overbore. So a Magnum primer really isn't necessary, and it might shoot worse in this cartridge. Also be mindful that 35 Whalen rifles often have throats that are way longer than magazine length. The Whalen was originally designed to shoot heavy round nose bullets, so most old Whalens have a lot of free bore when you use a modern pointy bullet or Spitzer style bullet. In addition to this, Remington commercial rifles chambered for 35 Whalen also had really long throats, and most of those owners had to jump pointy two, you know, 225 grain pointy bullets almost a quarter inch. But, uh, you know, those rifles were still very accurate. Are long throats bad? I don't know. Ask Weatherby owners if the rifles have horrible accuracy. The 9.3 by 62 has double the throat length of the Wayland, but people don't complain about accuracy with the 9.3 by 62. So don't lose sight of the fact that this is a hunting rifle, not a bench rest competition rifle, and it's okay to jump bullets. For those of you with longer throats, start by seating the bullet to the maximum length that will reliably feed from the magazine. Then load progressively deeper into the case, looking for accuracy nodes. Most reloaders don't know there's usually accuracy nodes close to the lands and far away from the lands. So if your magazine length is the limiting factor, you have to find that far away accuracy node, and it's usually not too hard to do. Now let's talk about brass. Many people make 35 Whalen brass from 30-06 brass, which is the way it was done for the first 70 years of this cartridge's existence. Just be mindful that when necking up 30-06 brass to 35 caliber, always use virgin brass. Don't use work-hardened 30-06 brass. But honestly, with this really nice Nosler brass out in existence right now, you know, I, I just buy 35 Whalen brass these days. Even a lot of times the Hornady 35 Whalen brass is pretty decent and you can get it even cheaper. You probably heard me say it before, but I don't start crimping my rifle cartridges until I get above about, you know, 180 grain, 300 magnum power. Since I can exceed that power level with the 35 Whalen, I often crimp this cartridge, but don't use the roll crimp feature on your seating die. Crimp is a separate step using a Lee factory crimp die. I use a light crimp on this cartridge where you could just barely see the crimp marks. So I'm going to be loading some 223 grain shock hammers today in 35 Whalen. And uh, all my brass preps done, I, uh, I, of course, I hand prime everything by feel. And uh, now I'm ready to load some whaling up. And you can see on station one here, I have an expander mandrel from 21st century. Station two is uh, my powder charge using Varget today. Uh, station number three, my seating station. And station number four over here is a Leaf Factory crimp die. So that's my setup today, and uh, let's get some 35 Whalen loaded.
And this is my 35 Whalen Improved Rifle. It's a really great rifle that's accurate, short, and handy. And packs a big enough punch to take down just about anything in North America I want to hunt. It's built on a commercial FN Mauser action that was stolen from a J.C. Higgins Model 50 I picked up for cheap at a gun show. It has a 22-inch custom barrel that's a 1 in 14 twist and uh, express sights on it. And this rifle is finished off with a uh, three-position Model 70 style safety, which I really like and prefer. This represents pretty much everything I want in a rifle, except I regret that it's the it's chambered in the improved version of the cartridge. You know, it, it, it should have been chambered in just a regular 35 Wayland in retrospect. Out of all the improved versions of cartridges I've loaded in my lifetime, I think the 35 Wayland benefits the least. Where you might get over 100 feet per second more velocity with the Ackley improved versions of most cartridges, you'll be lucky to get an additional maybe 25 to 35 feet per second from the 35 Wayland AI. You know, when you price out the expensive dies and fire forming brass, 35 Wayland AI really isn't worth it from a performance standpoint, in my opinion. But some people claim that the improved version provides better head spacing and much better brass life over the standard 35 Wayland. I've already established that a properly manufactured 35 Whalen rifle does not have headspace issues. So get that out of your head. But the improved version of the 35 Whalen actually does extend brass life. So in the end, brass life is the only real tangible benefit of the 35 Whalen improved in my opinion. Now for the biggest issue with making a 35 Whalen improved, and that's finding a gunsmith that actually knows what they're doing. P.O. Ackley stated that chambers for his improved cartridges need to be shortened so they have a slight crush fit on virgin brass. Ackley actually intended gunsmiths to set the barrel back deeper when reaming the improved chamber. Basically, the go gauge becomes the no-go gauge. Unfortunately, Many gunsmiths didn't do this. You know, they took a shortcut and just reamed ream the chamber out without uh, without shortening the chamber. And this is especially bad in the 35 Whalen Improved. A lot of Ackley Improved conversions I see are done wrong, which leads to problems with headspace when trying to fire form brass. So um, this is actually an issue with I, I see with a lot of... Uh, 35 Whalen AI rifles that aren't done right. If they aren't done right, you will have headspace issues when you're trying to fire form brass. All right, we're about to shoot 220 grain hammer hunters. And as you can see, that is a uh, factory brass, virgin nozzler brass. And I'm going to fire form these. Luckily, this 35 Whalen Ackley Improved Rifle was done correctly, and it's just wonderfully accurate with standard and AI cartridges. But personally, I wouldn't waste my time with the uh, Ackley Improved version of the Whalen if I did it all over again. So in conclusion, I believe that the 35 Whalen is more than just the poor man's magnum. 
It's a highly versatile cartridge that just might bridge the gap between the 30 calibers and the 375s better than any other cartridge. It's a good combination of power, velocity, low recoil, and loading efficiency that makes it the epitome of what a medium bore cartridge should be. When you look at the performance per grain of powder burned, the 35 Whalen is pretty much unmatched in the cartridge world. From an efficiency standpoint, it's an extremely unique cartridge in that regard. But it's not a corporate cartridge that was created for profit. Bench rest shooters don't use the 35 Whalen. And it's not suitable for shooting animals out at 800 yards and beyond. So for now, it's just doomed to linger in obscurity. But ethical hunters know a good thing when they see it. And the 35 Whalen is a fantastic hunting cartridge that truly does it all for North American game. It kills the same animals as the 338 Wind Mag, but with more efficiency, more frontal diameter, and way less recoil. It's the ballistic twin of the 9.3 by 62, but it handles the more desirable 200 to 225 grain bullets better and the ammo is more readily, readily available for the 35 Whalen in the United States. To many, the poor man's Magnum has become the perfect hunting cartridge. I don't use the Whalen for everything, and I don't believe it's quite as versatile as the 30-06, but when I go out into the wild specifically looking for black bears, moose, elk, bison, or nilgai, my 35 Whalen comes out of the safe without question. And this new 35 Whalen right here that I built on a budget has exceeded my expectations and is destined to get a lot of use. I hope it proved to many of you out there that it's easy to build a great shooting 35 Whalen for the same price as a new mass produced rifle. The sheeple in the modern firearms world will claim that 35 caliber bullets lack BCs and sectional density. But as I showed you in my ballistic charts, BCs don't really matter in this cartridge under 300 yards. And a 225 grain Barnes bullet or Acubon will penetrate all the way through any elk or bear. So who cares about sectional density at that point? The 35 Whalen appeals to those who walk the walk, not those who talk the talk. Nobody who's ever hunted with the 35 Whalen has anything bad to say about it. If you've ever sold a 35 Whalen rifle, it's always that one rifle you'll always regret getting rid of. You know, it's really that good. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and hit subscribe if you find my content worthy of your subscription, and I hope you did. You can reach me with any questions or comments at Desert Dog Outdoors at Gmail. Dot com. Thank you for watching, and as always, good hunting.